if you struggled with the group activity that we did in class on October 13th, here is a video that shows me working through with great detail explanation of each question that we did in class. The first one is asking for how many moles are in 15 grams of water. Now we are given that we have 15 grams of water. You're looking for the number information, okay, and that's the 15. You're looking for that and you're going to put what it is and make sure you put the units with it. So I have 15 grams of water and that's H2O. I'm trying to get to moles. Now there's a couple of the things that we have learned that we can do. We can go between grams and moles. If we're given grams we can get to moles. If we're given moles we can get to grams. The tool that we use to do that is molar mass. And we get the molar mass off the periodic table. Okay. The other big thing that we have learned is how to go between moles and the actual number. And what do I mean by the actual number? How many atoms do you have? How many molecules do you have? This would be kind of like saying, and I'll use the world of dozen, I could tell you I had 30, uh, sorry, I could tell you I had three dozen donuts, or I could tell you I had 36 donuts. So I'm giving you the actual number of donuts when I get down to the 36. Now to go between moles and the actual number, you're going to use as a tool Avogadro's number, and I'll just abbreviate AV number. That is the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. There are this many of whatever you're dealing with, actual number in one mole. So our actual number might be how many atoms, it might be how many mole, molecules. It doesn't matter, it depends on what we're dealing with. So the actual number, are they asking for how many atoms? then you're going to the actual number of atoms. Are they asking how many molecules? Then you're going to go to the actual number of molecules. So in here, they're not going to the actual number. They're happily content with us staying in moles. They gave me grams and we're trying to get to moles. So we put in the denominator the grams of water because that's what we're trying to get rid of. I don't want grams of water. What do I want? Well, they're asking for how many moles of water do I have. So I'm going to put moles of water up in the top. And then I go to the periodic table. And I know that hydrogen is 1.01, .01, and there are two of them. And I know oxygen is 16. So I have 18.02, and that goes with the grams. 18.02 grams are in one mole. That's what molar mass means, how many grams are in a mole. So when we divide those numbers, 15 divided by 18, I'm going to have 0 0.833 moles of water. Okay, now, in our next problem, we are given grams of water again. Different number of grams, I have 25 grams of water. But they're not asking me to go to moles, they're asking me to go to the actual number of molecules. Actual number of molecules. So we think about what we can do here. We're given grams, and if we know grams, we can get to moles. And if we know moles, we can get to the actual number using this one. So it's a two-step process. So first we'll go and say, I don't want grams of water, I want moles of water. I go to the periodic table and I know there's 18.02 grams in one whole mole of water. And then I say, but I don't want to stop there. I'll go from moles of water to molecules of water. And this is where the definition of a, of a mole comes in. A mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, much like a dozen is 12, but this is a much bigger number. A mole is this many. So then I can take 25 divided by the molar mass and multiply by Avogadro's number, and that will give me 8 point, let's see, I have three significant figures, 8.35 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. Okay, next one.
what is the mass? It's supposed to be O. Uh, no. Mass in grams, yeah, it was supposed to be of, of 22.5 moles of magnesium oxide. So we're given moles and we're trying to get to grams. So we have our tool that'll go from moles of magnesium oxide. Now in class, I told you how to figure out the formula of magnesium oxide. So let's stop and review that. If we find magnesium on the periodic table, we know it's in the 2A family. So at, in a compound, it's going to have a plus two charge. Oxygen is in the 6A family. It has six valence electrons. It wants to gain two, so it's two minus. So I have 2.5 moles of MgO. You have as many cation charges as you have anion charges. Two pluses and two minuses. Now we go from moles of MgO to grams of MgO. I need a molar mass. A mole to gram conversion uses molar mass. So I find MgO, Mg and O on the periodic table. Magnesium is 24.3 and oxygen is 16.0 that's 40.3 and that will go here 40.3 grams in a mole so 2.5 40.3 gives me to two significant figures 1.0 times 10 to the 2 grams of MgO. Now you will see on your calculator 100.75. Okay? But that's five significant figures. I only gave you two here, so your answer should have two. So we'd keep this one and keep this one, but we don't write 10 because 10 is nowhere close to 100.75. So we put our decimal point after the first non zero digit and we see that we had to move it over 2 to get there. That makes it 1.0 times 10 to the second. Okay. Next one, we're given grams of NCl3, and we're trying to figure out moles. So we're going from grams to moles. What tool do we use for that? We use molar mass. So I give you 25.0 grams of NCl3. And we say, I don't want grams of NCl3. I want moles of NCl3. And I have to have the molar mass. So nitrogen is 14. Chlorine is 35.45, and there are three of them. So I'm going to multiply these together and add to 14. And that gives me 120.35. And if I carried one extra significant figure on the nitrogen, let's do that. It's 14.01. That would actually be 0.36. It doesn't really matter. I just need at least one more here than I had here. There's three in my starting point, so four would have been fine. But I'll put 120.36. Always put the molar mass with the grams and the one with the moles. And that gives me 0. 3 significant figures, 208 moles. So now I know how many moles are in 25 grams of sodium chloride. Those are your typical conversions. Can you go between grams and moles and moles in the actual number? In our next question, I'm really starting to examine what the subscript is telling me in there. If I have one molecule, just one little molecule, now this is what it would look like. There would be a nitrogen, it would have a lone pair sitting on it, it would have a chlorine, it would have another chlorine. And I know this because I could do the Lewis structure and I could do the geometry, and this is what that little molecule looks like. So I have one of those. The question is, how many chlorine atoms do you see? Well, the answer is, I see three. There are three chlorines. So whenever you see that subscript, it tells you how many atoms are in the molecule. But let's not just have one molecule, let's up it to two molecules. I have two molecules of NCl3. So I have one, and I have two. I just want you to see the pattern here. How many chlorine atoms do you see here? Six. 
So if you know how many molecules you have, what do you have to do with that subscript to get how many atoms of that element do you have? Well, you multiply. Two molecules times the three chlorines would give you six. Now, if you wanted your units to do your work, what, how would that look? It would look like this. I have two molecules of NCl3. I don't want molecules of NCl3. I want atoms of chlorine. There are three atoms of chlorine in every molecule of NCl3, and that's six. But you didn't have to do that dimensional analysis-wise to come up with six. But let's up the scale a little bit. Let's not have um, two molecules. Let's have a dozen. If we have a dozen of these things, the question is how many chlorine atoms we have. Well, let's let each circle represent a molecule. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have a dozen of them. Everybody's great with that. Each one of these things is an NCl3. Each one of these has three chlorine atoms, right? Three chlorine atoms. Three chlorines here, three chlorines here, three chlorines here, and so forth. So if I want to know how many chlorine atoms I have, I have 12 molecules. Each molecule has three chlorine atoms, and that gives me 36. So I'm just tripling that number. Now let's try it for a whole mole of them. Now I had a dozen up here and a dozen is 12. How many is a mole? Well, a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. I can't draw that many. But if I could, I'd sit here and I'd draw myself 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those. And I'd keep drawing for days and days and days. And I'd die and my granddaughter would take over eventually. And maybe I'd get to that big number. But I do know that every one of these things has three chlorine atoms, right? Every single one of them has three chlorines. So if I want to know how many chlorine atoms are on a mole of them, and this is how many a mole is, I just take this times three. And that is going to be the number of chlorine atoms. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd times three is going to give me 1.080 no, times 10 to the 24th atoms of chlorine. It would be also true that if I have a mole of these, I would have three moles of chlorine. Just like up here, if I had a dozen of these, I have three dozen chlorines. That would be okay. But if you're asking for the actual number, you're usually taking it all the way down to all, use Avogadro's number and see how many you have. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful to you. But come and see me if you want more help. I'm happy to help you.